Hello, it's Bob Cook here. Um, this is uh, the TA Therapy Internet YouTube channel. And I want to continue my presentations on narcissism. Uh, the last presentation I did was talking about the different features and characteristics of a narcissist. And now I want to talk about the two categories or two types of the narcissist written about in the literature. Um, Cohort, Eleanor Greenberg, Masterson. They, they all talk about two types, uh, which they put into categories called the exhibitionist narcissist and the closet narcissist. So let's go on and look at the uh, classifications of narcissism. Uh, let's look at the exhibitionist narcissist. Firstly, uh, one of the features of uh, this type of narcissist is that they have an inflated sense of self. Oh, you might want to call this a grandiose sense of self-importance, uh, where they blow themselves up in a very sort of overt way. In fact, quite a sort of uh, unrealistic uh, sense of self, and very grandiose as a defence against, uh, of course, their loneliness and a lone position um, in terms of their interpsychic uh, personality. Um, are preoccupied by fantasies of unlimited power, so often their fantasies will be around things like um, their Superman powers or how they can magically um, come from such a powerful position. And then we have uh, quite a theme of sexual sadistic um, behaviours. So they're very overt in their behaviour, uh, very flamboyant. Um, very in your face if you like but their sense of specialness and self-importance is really um, uh, up there in a, in a very sort of a grandiose uh, sense really. Eleanor Greenberg um, you know, when she was writing about narcissism liked to call this type of narcissist a uh, Guichi narcissist in other words somebody who's really um, preoccupied with brands and inflating themselves in sort of um, important uh, brands like Guichi and um, yes this is this is a very um, selfish self-centered uh, overt flamboyant uh, type of personality the second type uh, would be of course um, the closet narcissist um, this person when I put covert exhibitionists there, I mean, they, um, a lot of their behaviour, instead of being overt, is very covert. Um, they feel special through association. So they will um, inspire to pass me around cult leaders uh, so they can feel special through them. Or be part of organisation or an association which has a lot of importance. So they can feel a sense of uh, real uh, specialness and perfection through this well-esteemed, high-status association. Uh, they feel quite highly ranked if the association organisation is, you know, uh, a pretty high one of excellence or even number one in whatever way we're going to grade that. Um, they ha they're very extra sensitive to slights. Of, uh, they feel humiliated humiliated uh, in, in ways of just slight personal um, processes or where they feel they've been put down or humiliated in any way um, and of course just like the exhibition narcissist they lack empathy uh, awareness of other people's personal space they need to be uh, the center of uh, attention as well but but um, they're far more closed and cut off in this closet way that I'm talking about. Okay, so we've got two types of narcissists there, um, both presenting quite differently, though the features I talked about in the presentation still are thematic through um, both categories. Okay, uh, that's about it. I'm going to do another presentation in a minute. Um, about the DSM-4 characteristics of uh, narcissist, and then after that I'll end my series on narcissism 
uh, but by talking about a treatment plan, uh, quite a general one, according to Cohort and Eleanor Greenberg, and uh, Eleanor Greenberg, I mean, and Masterson's idea on narcissism. I might actually include another presentation to close the set on narcissists and talk about TA's or transaction analysis view of how to work with narcissists as well. So I hope you enjoyed this small presentation on these two categories. Um, and thank you. Bye bye.